Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Selenium interview questions. That is, explain different Git commands. Let me answer. There are several Git commands. I cannot explain all the Git commands as an answer for this question. Rather, what I choose to answer is whatever the commands that I have personally used in real time. Okay. Whatever the commands that I have personally used in real time in my projects when I was working in the projects. Okay. Those commands I have listed down here, but in Git, there are several commands. Okay. So let's go with the important major commands uh, that are generally used in real time projects for various purposes. Okay. So you already know that the purpose of the Git. Okay. First, you need to understand the purpose of the Git. What is the purpose of the Git? You see, let's say there is a project. In this project, there are several people. Okay. Otherwise, I'll just uh, take this one person, this another person, this another person. Another person, let's assume these are the four people uh, who need to create or write the automation scripts for this project, one of the project, okay? They're working on the same project. This is a project. In that project, there are four automation engineers who need to write the automation scripts in Selenium, etc. okay? They have their own laptops, local machines, okay? We call them laptops or local machines. They have their own local machines where they are writing the code. But ultimately, the code need to be centralized. The entire automation code that has been developed by these people who are working for this project need to be centralized and put at a single location, right? So for that, the centralized location nowadays is something like a remote cloud repository, remote cloud repo, cloud means on the internet, okay? Remote cloud repo. One of the example software which allows us to create this kind of uh, remote cloud repos is uh, GitHub. Okay. We have several other, but GitHub is some, some, something like that famous. Okay. It's on the cloud means on the internet, like Google drive, etc. Okay. So now here the code need to be there, but these people are writing the code in their local machines. Okay. These people are writing their automation scripts in their local machines. So after this person writes the code, the code need to be uploaded here, right? Even this person writes the code, the code need to be uploaded here. The code need to be uploaded here. Once this person also completes, code need to be uploaded here, right? Now, a new person has joined the team. This person has joined late, a bit late. And by the time all these four people have already written the code and they're pushing the code into this uh, centralized repo. Now the project code is available here. Instead of this person going to each and every person here, what this person does is he will get the URL of this GitHub repo from this any of these four people and will download the entire code, will clone the entire code. Downloading means entire code they are downloading, okay? That is here uploading is happening, downloading of the code is happening. At same time, one more thing will happen. Let's say after this person has uploaded the code, now this person has downloaded the code and has made some modifications and with the latest uh, additions, he has added for example, this person has automated the login scenarios. This person logout scenarios. Okay. So login scenarios, he has uh, downloaded and for logout scenarios also, yeah, this person has written and uploaded the code. Now the code latest code is this one. This is old code. Now in this person's machine, the old code will be there. Now this person has automated few other scenarios related to login. Can he directly push the code, upload the code? No, this is not possible. What this person has to do is. This person has to first download the latest code to his machine, add his changes, and then upload the code. Then only the system need to accept. Otherwise, conflicts will happen. You see, this latest changes will get overrided by this person's code. If he, if this person doesn't know that other person has made the changes to this project code, project automation code. Similar thing applies for everyone. Before they upload the code, they have to uh, update their code. Okay, instead of cloning the entire code for as a new person, this person has to update their code with the latest code. And then whatever the changes they have done, add the changes to this updated code and then upload, then the system will accept without any cost. And also for every upload, uh, upload thing happening, a version history is being maintained. Okay, version one, version two, version three, and so on. Because 
if any person has uploaded the code and that particular code after uploading that by the person is not working, the repo is uh, failing. In that case, we can revert back to the previous version. Okay. So here we have to use some Git commands to either clone the entire code, upload the code, update the code. Okay. And uh, maybe many other things for each and everything done by this uh, people on this GitHub centralized repo, cloud repo to communicate with the help of Git software, which is like a command line tool where we can run the commands, Git commands like uh, this kind of commands, Git init, Git config and all. Okay. So they have to run some Git commands. Okay. To make all these operations between the local machines and GitHub uh, remote cloud repo possible. Fine. So far, so good. Fine. So next thing is, what are the those kind of commands? Okay. Now you understood how the people are working together as a team in this project, right? Now understood. So what are the different uh, majorly used commands in real time for such purpose? Okay. Git commands. Okay. There will be something like command line, like git bash kind of thing. After you open the git bash in that, uh, you will create a folder and, uh, you know, you will initialize that uh, folder using the git init command. Okay. You will initialize the folder for git using git init command. So to initialize a new empty Git repository in a directory, what is the use of uh, initializing an empty folder in your pro uh, in your uh, laptop? You are initializing an empty folder as a Git repository. Okay, using this command, if you run this command inside that folder, a dot init file will be created, and uh, that proves that your hidden file, hidden dot init file will be created. That proves that your folder has been initialized as a Git repository. Okay. So what is the purpose of doing that? You see, once you make an empty folder in your computer with the help of git init command as a git repository, empty git repository, whatever the changes you do for that inside that folder will be tracked by the git. Okay. Git sets up the necessary data structures and files needed to start tracking changes to your project files. Whatever the files you are going to add to that folder, they will get tracked. Okay. Because here, a lot of communication is needed. Okay. Who is doing what is needed and uh, the version history is maintained for all this communication to happen. Okay. And uh, also when you are uploading the code or downloading the code to see whether your code is the latest code or not. Okay. When you run some commands like git status, you will get to know what is the status of the current git. Uh, okay. Is it uh, in sync with the git uh, cloud repo or not? Such kind of things to happen. That should be a git repository okay if you add some files and then you say git status it will say that whatever the files that are there in your local repo are not there in the github cloud repo okay such kind of tracking of the changes between your local repo and the cloud repo can only be done in the git repositories and to create a folder and make that folder as a git repository you have to run this command hope you got the idea then git config now there are several configurations you can do with the git config for example here we have we can specify the username. Okay. We can specify the email address of the user of that local machine where Git folder is initialized and all. Okay. You can configure your username, email address, and et cetera, et cetera. Many other configurations which are used to identify your commits. This, these configurations are used for identify your commits. Apart from that, there are many other configurations apart from identifying the commits and all. There are many other settings and all those stuff. Okay. That are possible. This is to break the ice between uh, your local machine and the GitHub. Cloud repo because whenever you run the commands, they know that who is commit, who is actually pushing the code. Okay, Arun is pushing the code. Arun having this particular because there may be many Aruns. So Arun having this particular email address is pushing the code. Okay, are uploading the code, etc. Then Git clone. I told you already, right? This person who has newly joined don't have to go to any of these people and copy uh, the hard copy of this. Okay, uh, by putting a pen drive and all. Rather, this person will ask any of these guys to share the GitHub repo URL, remote cloud repo URL, uh, and uh, using that URL and using this command like git clone git URL dot git, something like this will be there. And uh, by putting that command, okay, it will create a copy of uh, whatever the git repo cloud repo is there. That entire copy will be copied to your that new new join is local machine, okay, or anyone freshly want to. Uh, download the entire project code, okay, of a project automation code, okay, that is there in the cloud repo so far. They can use this git clone, okay. Then git status. 
to track the changes, okay, the current status of the Git repo, local cloud repo, okay, to show you the current state of your working directory in your relation to the Git repository, okay. In your in your local machine, there is a whatever the Git for repository you created, that is a local repo. Whatever that is there on the cloud, a centralized place where all the project automation code is actually uploaded to there, that is a remote cloud repo, okay. This is a this is a remote cloud repo. This is your local repo, okay? To track the changes, okay? To track the status between this and this repos, local repo and cloud repo, remote repos, okay? The current status. Uh, like, uh, for example, uh, let's say in your local machine, you have modified some files. Uh, these modifications are not there in the cloud repo, remote cloud repo. In such cases, if you say git status, it will tell you which files you have modified and which files you need to upload onto the remote cloud repo so that uh, these uh, changes will be in sync with the remote cloud repo. And next thing is which files are staged for a commit, okay? So you cannot directly upload the, uh, you cannot directly upload your, uh, you know, uh, whatever the changes you have made in your local machine into the GitHub cloud repo, remote cloud repo. Rather first, there are some process where first you have to uh, this modified git status, when you say it will tell you all the list of uh, modified files which need to be uploaded. Then second thing, what you do is uh, instead of directly uploading, you will see, you will stage them. Okay, you have to go to the next level. Okay, directly you cannot upload here like this. Okay, from here to here, it will not get uploaded. There are some stages. In your local repo, they are there. And then some staging area you have to move. Okay, you have to move from here to the staging area. Then commit. Once committed, then you can upload. These are some steps, okay? They're in your machine, then move them to the staging area. From there, commit it. Once you commit with some message that need to be tracked for the version history, and then you push the code, okay? These are some steps. Direct uploading is not going to happen. So in which state we are, okay? Let's say you have modified the files, but you have not uh, added those files to the staging area, okay? Let's say here, you have modified the code here, but you have not moved, uh, moved the files, this particular files to the staging area, okay? The staging area, first you have to move. To move that files to the staging area, we have this git add dot, which will add all the changes in your uh, repo at a go. Instead of adding each and every single file separately, if you say git add space dot, then all the files which are modified in your machine will be moved to the staging area with the help of git add dot. Okay, if, uh, we, before git add out, they will be, it will, git status will be showing you the list of files that are modified in your machine at the product. And then after you say git add dot, this, if you type git status, you will see that these files have been, which are modified in your local machine, uh, they, it will show that they have been moved to the staging area and they will be in kind of uh, red color. Uh, and if, before moving to the staging area, they will be, uh, sorry, here, after moving to the staging area, they will be in green color. Before moving to the staging area, they will be in red color. Okay, so once they are in green color and there are no more uh, files that are modified in your machine and all the modified files are moved to the staging area, that is a phase one, then you are going to commit. Then you are going to commit. So once you say commit, okay, once you say commit, then if you say git status after committing using this command, using this command after you say commit, it will go to this level, okay? From staging area to the commit level, okay? This space to then, okay? Then if you say git status, at that time it will say that uh, your changes are ready to be uploaded to the cloud repo, okay? Commit means pakka kind of thing, final, okay? Final, I am ready to upload. Then you will say commit, okay? One staging area, then confirm. To confirm that you will say commit and then, and which files uh, like, uh, like like that okay so after committing if you say git status it will tell you like uh now you are ready to upload your changes to the remote cloud repo git add dot already told you it will move to this staging area then next after after the files have been moved from the modified state to the staging area with the help of git add dot okay then git commit hyphen m means m stands for message and you have to provide your message. What is the purpose of your uploading? You have to mention. I'll say that I have created some uh, five automation uh, scenarios of login functionality. So and so, some message I'll write down, okay? Or I have updated some scripts. I have deleted some uh, unwanted code. I have uh, whatever the things that you have done in your local machine that changes. 
you have to mention here and commit it saying that confirming that with this message, I'm confirming that uh, I'm, I'm ready to upload. Okay. It represents a snapshot of the changes you have staged and from staging area to the commit area. It, uh, it will create a snapshot. They allow you to track and manage changes to your project over time. Okay. Fine. So because of this commit message and all, once you push the code, after you push the code right here, version history, if you see who has committed the thing code and uh, uh, what type of commit it is, uh, what, is what is the reason for uh, committing, uploading and all will come here. Okay. This commit message will appear here after uploading. Okay. That is the purpose of the commit. Then finally, once you commit and say git status, it will tell you that you are ready to upload your code. For uploading the code, you have to say git push. Okay. Git push origin main like this. If you say, okay. So if you, if your uh, remote repo have a branch like main, sometimes master will be there. Whatever the branch name is there that you have to provide here, either main or master. Okay. So to upload your local commits to your remote. Finally, when you run this, your code will be uploaded to the uh, remote cloud repo like GitHub and all those stuff. And there's one more thing that is a uh, git pull. Okay. There's one more thing. Let me write down that. Uh, I'll tell you. Right. Let me move it to the end. Git pull. Git pull. So git pull uh, is a kind of command where to update your code. Okay. To update your update your code from cloud remote repo to your local machine. What does it mean? It means that. You see, this per, uh, you have uploaded the code, no problem. And after that, some other person has downloaded your code, uploaded the code. Now, latest code is here. Now, this person has again want to upload the code, push the code. But this time, a conflict error is coming because this is not the latest code because this person has already changed the made the changes. So this person has to get the updated code here first and then modify, then add his changes to this updated code, then upload. Okay. To do that, here you're not cloning, you're pulling. Pulling means it will update your code in the local repo. Then you can add your uh, changes or modifications to the updated code or the latest code, then upload. There will not be any conflict. It will allow. Okay. To do that or make that uh, updating of your local machine code with uh, in sync with the cloud repo code, because other people also may update the code in the cloud remote cloud repo to get the latest code, you have to use git pull. Okay. It will not get the entire clone, but it will download the latest updates and modify your uh, and update your existing code with the latest code. Okay. So, but it uh, clone is like entire copy or dumping. Okay. But this is not dumping. It's updating. Okay. So, oh guys, you got the idea. These are the major uh, important commands that we generally use in real time while, uh, okay. While uploading the code, downloading the code into the remote cloud repo from our local repo with the help of Kitch. Okay. Git is a software guys. Uh, you have to install in your machine. When you install that software, you'll get a command uh, line tool like git bash we call in that command line tool. We have to run all these commands and uh, make the things possible. So it's a CI CD kind of, uh, okay. Continuous integration, continuous delivery correlated uh, tool. It will help that in the process. So that's all for this session. Hope you got the answer for this question. Try to answer all these comments. Then you'll be, you're good to go. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.